Hello, everybody. How are you today? This is one more special interview because I am with another friend from Mexico. And I'm going to let him introduce himself to you now. How are you today? Hello, everyone. My name is Marcos Lee, but uh, 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 other people call me Mark. And I am from Mexico, a uh, small town in Baja California. And I'm just so happy to be here with you today. How did you start teaching English and why and when? So I think first thing is, why did I start learning English? Yeah. Uh, and then that takes me to why I taught English. So first of all, my, my father, he's from a small town in New York. He's uh, from the United States. He came to Mexico 30 years ago. He met a beautiful Mexican lady and he's been here like for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So my father is from the US. My mother is Mexican. But because I grew up in a small town in Mexico, I only spoke Spanish. And growing up, sometimes we would go and visit our my grandparents in the States. Mm -hmm. And I was very sad because I never had a conversation with them. They died when I was like six or seven. So I could never talk to my grand grandfather other and that made me really sad like i i lost that opportunity to talk to them and i couldn't communicate with my cousins i understood a lot of english because my dad was speaking english but i just didn't speak it so that made me really sad and it was like okay this is part of who i am it's part of my history of my culture and i don't want to lose it though i am more mexican uh tortillas beans uh Jalapenos, that's my culture. I consider myself more Mexican. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have a history from the U.S. So I decided to go to the U.S. to, to learn English. Uh, I started planning that when I was 15. I started praying. I started asking my parents that I wanted to go there too. And thank God, when I was 18, I went to California. I was studying there in a community college. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard because, you know, I, I am also an American citizen. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in Mexico. I'm Mexican. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't speak a lot of English. My teachers didn't understand me. Some people didn't know that I was from Mexico. So like I, would, I went with a teacher and I showed my essay and he started laughing because mm -hmm. I made a lot of mistakes. And I was just so sad, so overwhelmed. Uh, and mm -hmm. But I, I, I learned it uh, after a year. Mm -hmm. Just I, I really felt comfortable just talking to people and working. And then I, I ended up going back to Mexico because of a, a back injury after a few years in the States. So when I came to Mexico, you know, I lost everything in the US. I couldn't work. I had a back injury. If I, I, if I would sit down for like 20 minutes, I had this mm -hmm. back, that pain in the back that I just, you know, it was so hard to just have a normal life. Mm -hmm. I would take classes and I have to be standing up for, for many hours. So I just couldn't work. I, I mm -hmm. lost my car. A family member died. Wow. It was just starting over. So what, what can I do? I cannot do uh, jobs that I, I, I can like carry stuff. No, I can't do that, that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I did two things. Uh, one, it was because I knew English and I had some uh, documents from the States that I studied there. I was able to teach English uh, at schools. Mm -hmm. And few hours here, a few hours there. Mm -hmm. And also another thing that I did is I knew self photography. So I started doing some, some jo side jobs. Uh, so for like six years, that's what I was doing. Just awesome. teaching some English classes and doing some photography mm -hmm. some side jobs. And yeah, it was because, of, because I started teaching English to answer your question, uh, because it was a need, it was like a mm -hmm. tool for me to, to work, mm -hmm. to make a living, to pay the bills, to, to continue and. And uh, photography and then mm -hmm. English opened a door for me to continue while I was mm -hmm. still struggling with my health. Awesome. And when did you decide to get to social media to teach English? So I've been in social media for a while because I, I had like this freelancing mm -hmm. kind of job. I was I was known in my hometown because of my photography. I want to do videos, photography, yes. uh, marketing. So I had a, I had a few clients that I would do their marketing for like social media. So mm -hmm. every time there was like a new update in the algorithm or something like I would have to yes. get into it and learn. Right. Mm -hmm. So like they, 
suddenly TikTok came. And to be honest, I was like, ah, I don't know about this. Like people are just dancing. That's not my style. But I thought, okay, I have to like do some research because a client is asking me about this platform. Like I have to know. I'm like, yeah. That's what I said. That's my major actually yes. uh, marketing. Yeah. So I got into TikTok. I tried to do a few videos for, uh, for photography and not didn't do well. One day I was very just. Rem- I was very remembering my time in Italy because I was mm-hmm. speaking Italian, yeah. and I, I was like, ah, I just what well, I, I made a I decided to make a, a five minute video for YouTube, and I made it in small pieces, mm-hmm. and I put one in and on TikTok. Mm-hmm. So then, what happened is that I checked a few hours later, and it was mm-hmm. just growing. It mm-hmm. got over a million views. Wow. And so it suddenly had like over 70,000 followers. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, so maybe I should start posting videos about languages. So yeah. I do mostly Italian because mm-hmm. that's the followers I got. Mm-hmm. Or, but I also started doing it in English. Um, and yeah, that's, I started, I think, last year doing more of uh, languages. Yeah. Awesome. As an English teacher, which is the ability? out of the four abilities of English that you like to teach most? Speaking, reading, writing, what's your favorite one? Well, I so, like comprehensible mm-hmm. input mm-hmm. because when I started learning Italian, for example, mm-hmm. I was just listening to audios all the time, stories, mm-hmm. short stories, yes. again and again, mm-hmm. even though I didn't know how to speak. Mm-hmm. And then when I started taking classes, it helped it all clicked. Like mm-hmm. I was able to use what I heard and then uh, also apply it, speak it. So I mm-hmm. think it's really important to uh, tell the student to like you can be the greatest teacher, mm-hmm. but if they're not spending time with the language, like more mm-hmm. work. So they have to like listen to stories all the time or music and just get their ear uh, used to the sounds. And, yes. and over time, you know, it has to be comprehensible like they have to know uh, what it's talking about so i like to use all of them you know the writing mm-hmm. the listening and also yeah. even pictures images like yeah. try to remember i think it's important to use all of them but lately mm-hmm. in my own uh journey of learning languages yes. i i like to listen a lot because you can do it anywhere anytime you can go for, mm-hmm. for a walk you can be mm-hmm. listening to a podcast or something um you can be uh, washing the dishes and you can also be listening to something. So I think it's something really good and I like that. Mm-hmm. What is a memorable moment as a teacher for you? Oh, wow. I, I think uh, as a very important moment, but it, it might not be so much focused in the language. Mm-hmm. Think. Yes. It's just the influence the influence you can give as uh, as a teacher, not just for them to, like you said, an open source for them to work, yeah. to to get better lives, yeah. opportunities. Mm-hmm. But also, it's uh, you can give a good influence mm-hmm. to people. I was teaching uh, classes in a it was a high school, mm-hmm. some private high school. So yeah, it's a small small school, mm-hmm. and it was very sad because. One of my students died, passed away. Wow. It was one class, that person was there, you know, smiling. And the next class was a car accident. And it really ma- made you think what, what really matters in life, you know, it's mm-hmm. all the class we got together and we yes. went together to help the family. And we start having more conversations about just other things in life. And it, it was just uniting everyone. You know, like in the hard times, you're not there just to teach, but you're a friend, mm-hmm. uh, you're a guy, yes. you're a mentor. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, it's not so much focus on the language, but it, yeah. it was in the English class. And it was, I think it was impacted for them. Uh, mm-hmm. It impacted their, their lives and also to, uh, to not only be their teacher, but be with them in those mm-hmm. moments and, and continue our life also and remembering her mm-hmm. but also how we have to continue with with everything in life and, mm-hmm. and just kind of like you know just 
it was very uh, hard, hard moment. Yeah. That. But it was memorable. What is the advice you would give my audience to keep motivated to study English? Okay, so learning a language is a, it's a process. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. You don't learn it in seven days. Mm -hmm. it, it takes time. So just enjoy the journey. You know, mm -hmm. learning a language shouldn't be something that, oh, I have to learn it. But it's something yeah. you should enjoy. Yeah. Uh, you should acquire it. So I think it's yeah. just sometimes it's finding something you're very, very passionate about. Mm -hmm. Like I was very passionate about sports, like basketball. Yeah. So I would watch videos in English, but it was about basketball and I enjoyed it. It was, it was yeah. great. Or even watching a movie or something you like. So just if you're not enjoying it, you know, there's something wrong. You should mm -hmm. truly enjoy it mm -hmm. and you're going to learn it faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one, one thing. And also mm -hmm. try to be the more, spend the most time you can in the language. Mm -hmm. So every day, every day, just, uh, swim in the language i could say just everything everything yeah. you do try to think it in the language yeah. try to speak it mm -hmm. talk, uh, force yourself to speak with friends in the language and mm -hmm. yeah do everything in english it's it's kind of like try to just have all your day in english if that's the language you're learning yes i agree what do you think the future of teaching will be after the pandemic so during the pandemic, we were able to see how everything is more online now. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Uh, also the social media platforms like TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Mm -hmm. And now people are, they like taking classes online. Yeah. People were not used to like in my own town mm -hmm. when I would talk to somebody about maybe, oh, I can teach you English, but maybe let's do it online. They were like, what? It's like, mm -hmm. are you sure? Does it work? Mm -hmm. But now with after the pandemic, like everyone is, it's very, this is very common for them. And I see a lot of YouTubers like you, other people, and also mm -hmm. social media, people are used to watching videos. Mm -hmm. And so I think now it is good for the teachers because also now you can have mm -hmm. uh, students from all over the world mm -hmm. impact they can teach. So I think now we're heading more and more towards the online. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion about non-native language teachers? What do you think about it? I think we need all kinds of teachers, mm -hmm. natives and non-natives, because when you're non-native, you're able to understand the struggles that mm -hmm. somebody goes through when they're learning the language. Yeah. Well, maybe a native won't understand because they grew up with the language, mm -hmm. but a non-native knows the struggles, the, how, how hard it is sometimes, mm -hmm. how you can overcome those things by experience. Yeah. And also they can see you speaking the language, which is a motivation for them. Like, wow, if he did it, I yeah. can do it too. So that's why in that sense, I think it's really good to have non-native teachers. And of course, uh, the natives is great too, because you get to hear them and their, how they speak their pronunciation mm -hmm. and get more used to that. Uh, the native speakers mm -hmm. but i think both are great and yes. when you're non-native it's a great motivation for people uh, that's that's what i i told my students they would say oh you're an american uh the us like i was like hey i had to learn english yeah uh, i had to write every day 40 words i didn't understand i had to mm -hmm. call my dad and say dad what does this mean yeah uh, they asked me for a flash drive yeah. Uh, for school, when the flash is like mm -hmm. pictures and drive, what, what does it mean? Yeah. Uh, it's like a USB, right? So I had to go through a lot to oh, learn it. And now it can be a motivation for that. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. And they're learning another language. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, I speak Italian and I speak basic French. So I love wow. learning languages. Wow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm taking some classes. Uh, it's biblical Greek also. Hebrew. Oh, wow. Like, are you learning it? Yeah. Yes. I'm not very fluent yet, but mm -hmm. I had some motivation for them, like, that you can mm -hmm. make it. Yeah. You can also teach it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you completely. Now I think we could go to the rapid round game, which is the part that everybody loves. And my first question for you, Mark, is English is? Ha. 
man not aware. English is a language that can open so many doors. Awesome. My favorite word in English is good. Life is beautiful. My family is amazing. The most beautiful word in Spanish for me is gracias. Awesome. If I wouldn't be an English teacher, I would be cinematographer, photography, or languages. They have both. Yes. Gotta <laughs> be both. You're the boss today. My favorite place in the world is my hometown. Uh, yeah, there's a beautiful landscape with volcanoes, wetlands. Mm -hmm. And though I have traveled so many places, mm -hmm. I always like going back there. Mm -hmm. If it was my last day on Earth, I would. I would just love to spend it with my family and my friends. Just enjoying that last day with them. Nice. Very nice. Now you can ask me whatever you want. Okay. So if you could travel to any place in the world, where would you go? I would go to New York and again. Yeah. And England. Awesome. Wow. There are so many countries that speak English. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your favorite English accent? American English. But I like British English a lot as well. Yeah, I mean, too. So I know you you, uh, you have a school where you teach English. Mm -hmm. What are your plans for the future? Is that what you want to continue doing for any years? Or you have uh, a vision for, for that? English is my life. I still study English. I study English for 35 years now. I'm still a work in progress because the more I learn, the less I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you like the most about your country? The warmth of the people. Mm -hmm. And that's big. Your favorite food is rice and beans. A Brazilian oh. staple food. Really? Yeah. So. Yeah. If you could learn another language, what would that language be? French. Oh, French. Awesome. I, I think we got to the end of the interview, and for every guest, I have a sentence, a quote, a takeaway. And for you, it's going to be something that I learn the hard way in my life, but I think it fits you really well it's a it comes from an african word ubuntu yeah. i am i am because we are so okay what i get from that is nobody does anything alone and i think we are both dream chasers and i want everybody to know that your content is amazing Thank You're you. a great teacher, a great, great teacher. I learned so much from you during this interview. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure to have you on the channel. All his information will be in the description box down below. And go there and follow him on all his social media because he's awesome. <laughs> thank you, my friend, for doing this. No, thank you for the invitation and for your time. It was great talking to you. See you all next week. Thank you. See you later. See you later. Hello, it's Rod's friend here, Gino from Real Everyday English. Sorry for interrupting your video. I just want to make a quick recommendation that you subscribe to Rodrigo's channel. He's an amazing guy. He's so humble. He's so dedicated. And he creates absolutely fantastic content. See you people soon. Bye-bye. God bless.